here yet again. And I want to thank Sister Zardi too and all the sisters and brothers that's invited me here for consultations and the warmth and the welcome from the people in Birmingham. This is not the first time I've spoken here. This is probably the fifth time, probably. And I, I've done talks here where I've even missed my train back to London. But I want to bring my wife, Brenda, forward to say, can we have a warm round of applause for the woman who is supporting us? Yes. So, like they say, beside any successful man, there's got to be a powerful woman. And this is one of them right here. Okay, so we left children back in London, 60 year old and 10. We've got nine children between us. Nine, starting from 35 all the way down to, to six. And, and, and six grandchildren, my side, and still counting. So, you know, we're family people. But, you know, we love coming up here and sharing <laughs> medical knowledge and things to improve and evolve our nation, evolve our community, because no one else is going to do it but us. And it's taken this long to realise it, but now we realise it. Let's keep saying it and then walk the talk. Mm -hmm. right? Let's walk the talk. Another round of applause for my dear wife. So, so um, it's Black History Month. And I want to say two minutes about myself, because some people here know me, some people don't know me. I started out on my journey in medicine about 37 years ago. Um, I started out studying Ayurvedic medicine, and I went to India. Not to study medicine, I went to India for a spiritual journey. I was 18 years old, and I, I, I grew up in Jamaica. I'm from Trelawney. My parents are from Trelawney, Lower Trelawney. My mother is from Clarkstone, that side, Brownstone, not Brownstone, more Clarkstone, and, and um, Duan's Vale and King Lush. She's literally from King Lush. My grandfather, um, named Moses, who died 104 in London. My mom took him and he lived to 104. And so that's um, that side of Jamaica. And then my father come from Upper Trelawney, Stetton, Albertown. Um, you know, Warsaw, Wirefence, Sparling, Christiana, those sides. And I went to school in Albertown and I went to school in Manville, Manchester. I went to, I went to about nine schools in Jamaica. I went to about nine schools in Jamaica. I went to school in Belfry, I went to school in Kingston. I lived in Dwayne Park. I went into Tuwell College. I went to St. Christopher's High in, high, in um, um, where there's a halfway tree. And then I went to Smith's Preparatory in Mandeville. I went to Villa Road School in Mandeville. I went to, um, you know, Decartre College in Mandeville. I went to, you know, um, um, Queenland School in Trelawney. The, my first school was, was, was a cow shed. And the time it was a cow shed that they turned into a school. They would never have no walls, just divisions and roof. It was a cow shed. Yeah, Mr. Menzi and Mrs. Menzi. Was the, was the headmaster and headmistress. So then beat you when you come through the yeah. gate late. Mm -hmm. So I had that culture. That's why I wanted to share that with you. And then I went to India and developed an Indian culture because I was looking for spirituality. I became a monk. So all suits and stuff like this, I didn't wear till I was much later. I was in robes, was saffron robes. Didn't have no wife, didn't have no sex. I was celibate for years. Himalayas with masters and yogis and people who do mysticism and people who spend a whole life just doing spirituality from birth, stuff like that. So I spent a long time in India and I have a number of masters that I learned from in India. I learned meditation, I learned breathing exercise, I learned prayers, I learned mantra chanting, I learned how to do certain ceremonies and I was initiated as a priest. So I can clear spirits from houses, um, I can I can say certain mantras and 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 um, and people's mental um, spiritual stuff it will leave them and stuff like that. I don't use it a lot, but at times I have patients who have um, hauntings in themselves and in the house and stuff. And my partner has seen me. We go in. I've gone in and and and, and clean the house and, and and set the whole thing clear for them to continue their life. So I started studying in India Ayurvedic medicine and then came back to England and studied um, homeopathic medicine. And then went to Oxford and studied um, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is to do with the mind and to do with behavioral patterns and how to get, help people to get rid of certain phobias. 
And then again, I did another course in Oxford in Regency College. Um, Regency College, that was um, um, that was a counselling, gold counselling. So I can put somebody in an alpha state and find out, you know, that they went through, you know, child abuse with their uncle or their dad or something like that, and go back and do repair work in their childhood. Put them literally almost in a hypnotic state but it's not completely hypnotic state. They can actually come out of it. But I put them in a state, take them back, and find out what happened, and, you know, um, take the journey. And as they say, you re reframe it for that person so they can live their life now without going through the trauma of the past. But that's a short synopsis of me, and um, that's not including my musical side. I'm a musician. I run a music school. And when I left Jamaica and came here, I was 16 years old, and I, I, when I landed here within months, I was playing, because I was grade 8 piano, I was a grade 8 classical pianist from the age of 16. So when I landed here, I played with Barrington Levy. Um, Barrington Levy is one year older than me. So I know, because when I toured with him, Barrington Levy just, I'm one year older than him, he just turned 16 and I was going 17. So I toured with Barrington Levy, Barry Brown, Linval Thompson, Sugar Minot, most of the Jamaica artists, I've worked with them in a four-piece band. I, I'm not making this up, sister, I'm not looking for up. No, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm playing. No, I, I was in a four-piece band and I toured in Birmingham. I, I came here as well with, with the band. It's a, it's a well-known band called Karna Shot. The name was given by Sugar Minot. And so, Corner Shot, we played for all of the Jamaican artists that come to the UK, we played with them. So when the man said, tell us all, I want you to know I know most of the musicians all over this country and even in Jamaica. I know a lot of musicians. I run a music school, so I teach classical piano and classical instruments to children. And my school in London is um, noted for teaching the youngest children in East London. So, in music, Music's my first love. My dad was a musician as well, so music's my first love. I still run a school with my son. I would teach classical piano. I teach singing as well, and uh, to lots of children. So again, so that's, that's my remit. What I want to share with you today in African Black History Month, first and foremost, is that this week, the mobile phone is 40 years old. So it was 40 years since they made the mobile. And embarrassingly enough, I only discovered this week, I didn't know, that it was, it was invented by a black man. It was invented by a man called Dr. Henry T. Sampson, S-A-M-P-S-O-N, Sampson. And um, he invented the mobile phone 40 years ago. Of course, when he invented it, it was 2.5 um, pounds. It's like a bag of sugar. It's like a bag of sugar. And if you, any of you remember, I remember some of the first mobile phones. They were huge. They were really massive. You know, big, you know, and so forth. So, um, just to mention some of the things that black people have done for Black History Month. I mean, we have Dr. Charles Drew. We have a doctor that he, he isolated blood. That we today have what you call a blood transfusion. So people with sickle cell anemia, people who get anemic. You have to have a blood transfusion. In fact, many people can die if you don't have a blood transfusion when your blood hemoglobin goes too low. And so Dr. Charles Drew, he was the one who isolated blood and was able to have blood transfusion done. But then, unfortunately, due to racism, he had a car accident and was taken to the hospital and needed blood transfusion to live. And they refused him blood transfusion that he invented because they didn't accept black people in that hospital. And so Dr. Charles Drew died like that. Mm -hmm. The first open heart surgery, successful open heart surgery ever in history, is was done by a black doctor. Yeah. And and so um, the traffic lights. I don't know if most of you know the traffic lights was invented by a black man. Light bulb. Um, the the road sweepers that clean the roads. The fridge. Um, you know, it goes on and on. I don't want to bore you with, with just data. Um, okay, well then, um, we have um, Elijah McCoy. Elijah McCoy 
made the first hub for a train that means the train can go from one town to another without them stopping the train um, and greasing those caps. You'd have to stop and grease the caps so that they can continue that journey to finish their run. But Elijah McCoy made a certain cap for those trains that is continuously greasing itself. And so he was the person who allowed us to travel like that. And they called those back then, you know when people said the real McCoy? Mm -hmm. They really called it because those days some people used to make those caps and they were the fake ones. They weren't the original McCoy caps. So then they came up with the thing saying, no, these are the real McCoy. And to those words, the real McCoy came up. Um, we have modern times, more modern, modern times, we have, like we said, Dr. Henry um, T. Samson invented the, make sure that's not an emergency. We have, um, we have um, Dr. Henry T. Um, Samson who invented your mobile phone. Now we talk about Bill Gates. Uh, and, 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 and Steve Jobs who did the Microsoft and all the computer world that we have www dot but if you didn't have the mi if you didn't have the mobile phone you couldn't get www dot on your mobile now we do everything on our mobile yeah. on the way here today the lady at the train station told me that actually she's fed up because now even if the person's mobile dies you can still book your ticket and pay things by taking out the chip from your mobile and give them your chip. You can pay a bill with that chip. Yeah, they can check anything and do whatever you need to do if your mobile dies. So that wouldn't be possible unless it was Dr. Henry T. Samson. We are, invent we are inventors since a long, long Im time immemorial. I want to share with you something about the nature of black people and why we have been the inventors. First, I want to say that most of us have disbelief about our own ability because we've been dumbed down, repressed, our development's been arrested for so long. And we've been given images, shown images of the negative aspects of our people and the negative aspects of our journey. Given that our journey is one that has so much trauma from, from slavery, and we're still in that, that slavery, the trauma and the aftermath of slavery. We're still going through that and coming through that. So when we hear about things that great things that black people did, we, we, we accept it with one hand and the other hand we, we, we fill with doubt because we don't know nobody that suck or invent anything. Most of the people we know, them are beg you something. You know, or them are take with something, you know? They might bad mind you for something, grudge you for something. And so we, very, we regard everything jealously and, we, and we're very predatory. But that's how we've become after our traumatic experience. We weren't always like that. I want to bring your, I want to bring your attention to, once you said it's not boring, so I'm going to do this a little. This is one of my favorite subjects because growing up in Jamaica, I will tell you this, okay? Growing up in Jamaica, I'll tell you, I had a very good upbringing. My dad worked hard, he came to England and went back to Jamaica in the 60s. So when he went back, he did well to go back in the 60s. 69, he went back to Jamaica, built business and he was self-employed. I never saw my dad work for somebody ever in my life. I never saw my dad get up and say he's going to work for somebody. And I'm talking about somebody that come here early and went back to Jamaica in the 60s. So I'm saying that to say that I had an upbringing in Jamaica where I know the culture very well. And I want to share something about the Caribbean, not just Jamaica. We have a way where we have been indoctrinated. You know it says in Jamaica we have the most churches. We have the most churches per square mile in the entire world. Yeah, yeah. And it's worth thinking about that. That's the next thing. We take everything we do, we take everything we do and everything we achieve for granted. Well, if, if Sir Alexander Fleming is told, if you're told that Sir Alexander Fleming invented the antibiotic, we remember that. You know, if you tell you that Sir, Sir, um, whatever his name, Christopher Columbus, discovered Victoria Falls in Africa, we remember that. 
You see, because that's the conditioning that's done to us. And for me, Black History Month, for me, first and foremost, is to uncover and undo an antidote, that poison that has been given to us by our enemies. For too, for too long, we trust our enemies more than we trust our own. And, and, and we still have that disease. That's why most of, I want to say you, but most of our people go to the hospital, doctors and other professionals, and because they're in a white coat, they're in a white skin, we accept that what they're saying must be true. And it's now taken decades for my mother's generation. My mother's 80. The whole other generation wouldn't listen to anybody like me ever, say 50, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, because my mother is 80. So they wouldn't listen to no black man tell them about no health anything, no matter how much MD you have after your name. They would literally say, can you give me a white doctor, please? Because the, 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 the conditioning that they've done to us, not knowing that if you have the choice of anything, choose a black one. Yeah, true. No, this is it. Yeah. If I want an architect, if I'm going to choose somebody to do architecture, I want a black one. Yeah. An engineer, I want a black one. A mechanic, I want a black one. A doctor, I want a black one for anything I want. I want a black one. Because I know when black people achieve something and they get it, Nobody gets it like them, and that's why white people made us slaves. Because we're good at doing everything. We're, no, I'm dead. I am dead. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm actually deadly serious. We are actually good at absolutely everything. I don't think you have time. Nursing, we're the best nurses in the world. They send us to Iraq, Iran, Pakistan, India, we all over the world. And they still call us niggas. Why you have us all over the world looking after your kids, birthing your children? Why you have us at your most private part, taking your child from your womb if we're just niggas? Why did the white man have us in his home looking after his kid more than his wife? That the, 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 the maid is saying, you know, man, so we, we sick. You never hear the wife say we sick. You say, oh, Joel's sick. I don't know what's wrong with him. And she ain't got the love, the breast milk, or anything to give the maternal love. He was an African slave that would be breastfeeding some of them and looking after them when they're sick. Even the mother would say, oh, you know, they're sick, go look after them. We are the best nannies, we're the best mothers, we're the best matrons, the best nurses, we're the best everything when we put our heads to it. The best mechanics. We will chop a car and put two different cars together. I'll make it work. I'll make it work. We we'll yeah. definitely make it work. We will take condensed tin, sardine tin, all the tins that we have in the Caribbean that we use from food and use it, beat it out and make it up to use it, make something, something, anything. Telephone, I anything. We use the telephone, we use the condensed tin or the bully beef tin or whatever and put a string in it and hang it and we talk to it. So that is to show you in this Black History Month we have been doing stuff like that for a long, long, for since time. Since time, because we never have no big city as such. We had pyramids, but we did things in the forest and the jungle that worked. And when they saw us with stuff, and we built, by the way, let me just yeah. redirect a bit. When it comes to architecture, we talk jungle there, let me just flip the script and say, you so see, when it comes to palatial buildings, like, um, this is going to shock you. This is going to shock you. You see, like, cathedrals, this is going to shock you. Cathedrals are particularly built by the Moors. It was a particular skill. That's why you can see a building and say, it's cathedral. Different to Anglican. A black man, they were called Moors. The word Moor come from Moorish, and the word Moorish come from Morocco. That's Moor, Morocco. People from there say Moorish. And I've been to Morocco, and it's just across the road from Africa. And when you see them in Morocco, when we say dark, when we say dark skin, when we say dark skin, Morocco is Africa, we know. Them draw a line and call it for them all over the place. Them draw a line and like chronic said, capture land. The whole light is capture land. The next thing with our people, we in disbelief that these people are so bad and wicked. Just like in the schools, your child comes to you and says, Mom, my teacher don't like me, blah, 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 blah. They say, let's stop in eyes and go. And then she says, I can't understand why your son, you know, you know, Kwame, he, he behaves like this. And, and, and then you, you look at Kwame and you pull him outside and say, I told you I'm going to wait till you go home, right? And you don't for a minute think that maybe 
Kwame is telling you the truth. That white teacher don't like him at all. Really don't like him. And you take so long to realize that you're waiting him is 13 and 14 when they proper demonize him. Because when you're young children, and this is Black History Month, I'm telling you what we're up against, who your enemies are, and who your frenemies are. Because no matter how much black history you know, if you don't know how your battle is and who you're battling with, who your enemies are, you're nowhere. Exactly. Okay, let me interject quickly. Sir. One live, quick, 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 live, live, true story happened this week. My son goes to school, he come back to me, he says, Daddy, when the bell rings, they tell me, I must put my hand on top of my head like this. I freeze. I said, what? He goes, after doing this, when the bell rings, I said, all right then, you know what, you don't do that again, you know. You get me? The next morning I went to the school, I said to the teacher, my son will be not be partaking in this exercise that you're doing, the um, use them. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't see no wisdom behind it. She said, what, 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 what? I said, my son will be not be partaking. So, I come home to pick him up now. I come back to school, pick him up. I said, son, did you put your hand on top of your head? He goes, no. He said, what did you do? He said, I just stood there looking around, looking at everybody else. He said, what, what was everyone else doing? Putting their, head, their hands on top of their head. You know what I'm saying? So what Dr. Mark is saying is a real thing. Yes. You must yeah. relate to you, them. Yeah. When the youth them come home from school, try your best to find out what yes. is going on in the classroom because they're trying to program the youth them. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Tell them why, why, why you tell them why you never like Now, ask my son, do you like doing this? He says, no. I said, why? He goes, because that's what the police say. Is me? Yeah. How, 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 my son's five years old. Oh, my, son, my son is five years of age. Yeah? I said, how do you know the police say this? He goes, because he see the on Transformers. He watched the Transformers movie. He seen the man, the, the, the policeman point the gun at the youth and say, put your hands on top of your head. My, my son is not a criminal. So why was he feels that he might put his hand on top of the head like he's a criminal? So that's how my son relates to the thing. Yeah. So we go down to the school, get them off the yard, harass the picnic and do them thing there. You get me? We don't conform in that manner. You know what I'm saying? So please, my people, you know what I'm saying? If you can't get the youth out of school, just make sure you, you know how to, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you relate with the youth them. Really, really pay attention to that kind of stuff. Thank you. Thank, it is, you. thank you so much. Thank you for that. Thank you. It's going on all the time. And you have to, the intimidation, and you are, you have to stay like policing. That's the word I would use. You have to police your children when they come home. You have to police the school. You have to, you have to inquisit the teachers. Just drop the little one question with them. Oh, Mr. Mr. Marlin, and so, 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 and just drop the little one question and feel them when you hear them talking back.